Good morning, hello and welcome to the video. So this video is going to be for people who are looking for a new way to meal plan. The reason that I'm making this video is, well firstly because I enjoy meal planning and I'm, I think I'm pretty good at it. And secondly, I've mentioned on here before that in my online uh, mothers group, this question pops up quite regularly about how people plan their meals. So. I thought I would just sit down and make a video and tell you all about how I do it. Lots of people have different ways of planning meals. I know some people like to just um, make it up day by day based on what they feel like, um, maybe what they have in the pantry at the time, or some people go to the shops more regularly, um, and some people just plain, I guess, don't have a plan. Whatever works for you fine keep doing it okay so just as a little disclaimer i will say that my way of meal planning is kind of structured but it really works for us um and it means that we're not having to run to the shops all the time and it another bonus of this way is that you can stick to a budget so let me tell you about a few essentials that i use to plan my budget one is a meal planner pad like this you can get these from Kmart and um, just obviously grid I only use really the the dinner section but it doesn't matter if you've got the whole thing sometimes I like to plan to incorporate like a different lunch or breakfast throughout the week so I, I sometimes use those squares too the other thing is a shopping list to stick on your fridge again this one is from Kmart you used to be able to get cool ones from Kiki K, but they've gone bust. And the other thing is something you all have, paper. Okay, so the way that I do this is, I have usually a set day of the week that I do our shopping and I do the online shopping. Sometimes this varies, um, but usually I do it on a Friday. So on that morning, I'll sit down and I'll come up with what we're going to eat for that week. So the way that I come up with these meals of what we're going to eat, there's a few different ways. I've got my little notepad here, so let me just refer to that. So um, I basically just write seven little dashes on my paper to come up with the meals. And it's based on what I feel like, like any cravings that I might have had. Also, like if I crave something through the week, I might scribble it on the back of my current meal plan just so I can remember it for next time. So it's what I feel like. It might be, we might have a surplus of a vegetable or extra of something in the fridge that I use up. So I'll think of a meal that incorporates that. Um, then it's a combination of, if we're planning to go out one night that week that we know of, that will factor into the meal plan. And also it will, depend on what frozen leftover meals we have in the fridge so if i've like got a double batch of something and we can incorporate one of those meals into the meal plan so when i'm coming up with my seven meals for the week usually it will incorporate one of those frozen meals from the freezer it'll incorporate one or two meals that are no think recipes so the ones that you can just cook off the top of your head, no recipe required. It, uh, it will also involve one to two tried and tested recipes. So recipes that, you know, family favorites that we have on the regular. And then I'll also incorporate one or two new recipes. I like to try new recipes. Um, and then in that mix, there'll be a meal generally of something that I can make a double batch of that I can then freeze and and pop up in the freezer to use for another easy meal. The last thing that I will incorporate into the meal plan is what I call whatever you like night and this is something that my mum used to call when we were little when I guess we she didn't feel like cooking or there was no meal plan we would have whatever you like night and that meant that Oh, well, when I was growing up, it was like, well, do you want eggs on toast? You want, I don't know, wheat mix? My brother probably had, but 
in our house yeah whatever you like night it might mean something like yeah same like eggs or a toasted cheese sandwich sandwich but more often than not by the time we get to the end of the week what i find is um at some stage through the week there's been a night where we've had extra leftovers the next day that aren't feasible or we've somehow gone out and we don't actually need that whatever you like night but i like to build it into the week so that it's just there as a little buffer and if if we get to that night and we don't have any um anything planned we can either do the whatever you night like or we can go out and get something if we don't have anything planned um so it's just a good thing to build into the end of the week what is this bit all right so you might be wondering where i get my recipe ideas from so as i mentioned part of the recipes will just come from the top of my head like you know those things that are super easy to cook like oh, there's a piece of dust just floating here it'll be something like um chicken schnitzel or tacos or burritos or like a stir fry or like a barbecue you know stuff that you that you don't have to think about um, aside from that, I have a few places that I get my recipes from. So I'm going to show you that now. This little book is actually one that I've kept since I was uh, 1997. So since I was early teens. And in it, I just started putting all like family recipes of things that we... And I've got my little dip art in here and stuff like that. Family recipes of things that we had... Um, on the regular as kids you know it's got mum's spaghetti bolognese recipe um, it's got sweet and savory stuff in here but just I still cook stuff from there when I uh, what about maybe 10 years ago I decided to um, remake some books like that and so that's what this is so I've got one for sweet and I've done my own little decorations on the front and I've got one for savory. Um, the paper that you see here is actually recipes from a common sense cookery book that my Nana gave me that I decided would be cool to make into a book like this rather than just having her book in a drawer sometimes. So in a drawer somewhere. So this one is good because I look at it all the time. So the things that go into this book are when I make a new recipe and if I like the recipe then that recipe gets um, stuck into this book either I'll handwrite it or I'll stick the recipe um, you know photocopy it or cut it out of a magazine or whatever so anything in here is tried and true so if I'm ever going to like I don't know some thing and I need to take a sweet recipe I know that I can make anything in here and it's going to work rather than like trying a new recipe that's going to flop. So I do get a lot of inspiration out of these books. It's full of meals that we've already made that we already like. So I definitely use these all the time. Okay. And the, the other place that I get recipes from is recipe books. So, um, yeah, nothing really to explain there. I've got my recipe books and occasionally I'll grab one and flick through it and get something out of there. In those recipes, I usually note down yes or no. So if it's if it's something that we didn't like or it didn't work, I'll write no, fail or whatever. And if it's something we liked, I'll give it a big tick and then we know for next time. Now, this next part is a little bit... Um, it's definitely extra, but I, I love, absolutely love this folder. So this is my recipe folder of recipes to try. Every month I like to pick up two copies each of the Coles and the Woolworths free magazines that have the recipes in them. And when I flick through them and I tear out any recipe that I want to try, and then those recipes go into this binder so i've actually i used to have just like a little alligator clip with all the recipes stuck together but it was a mix of 
sweet, savory, and you know, special occasion all jumbled in together. And I found that every week when I was making my meal plan, I was just flicking through look, looking at the same thing over and over again. So then that's when I decided to um, separate the book into sections. So I, I totally went extra. I know this is. Um, so I've got summery desserts. Can you see this? Individual desserts, cakes, wintry desserts, other desserts, healthy desserts. Um, healthier baking, smoothies, smoothie bowls, children's recipes, sides, soups, salads, starters, um, Christmas, Easter, cocktails, Christmas, yeah, I've said that, Christmas sweet, Christmas savory, and there is a section, oh yeah, main meals. So it, when I tear out the recipes that I wanna try, I then just pop them into this book and it's got oh, it's got all sorts of whoopsie it's got all sorts of nice looking things in there and so when i want to try something new which as i said i love doing especially with baking i flick through this and like i said um what i incorporate like one to two new recipes every week from this binder and then if we make it and we love it and it's something that we'd like to eat again, then that recipe gets stuck into one of these two books. And if I, if we don't like it, we just throw it away. So that is where I get my recipes from and that's how, yeah, that's where I get my recipes from. So the next part is how to plan what meals you're going to have on what day of the week. So once I've got my list of meals, they're all written down on a piece of paper. The way that I arrange them on the week, there's a little bit of a method to it. So at the very end, the very last day of your week, oh, and by the way, this is Monday to Sunday, but we usually get our groceries on like a Saturday. So I'll just cross these letters out and write whatever day works for us whatever day is the start of our meal week. So the last day of the week is where I'll put that whatever you like night. Towards the end of the week, I'll also put the meal that we're gonna be having out of the freezer. At the beginning of the week, I'll put any recipes that have ingredients that are more perishable that I know need to be had at the beginning of the week or if one of the recipes that we're having is using up vegetables that were bought the week before that we need to use because they're going to go off then i will obviously put that at the beginning of the week so that's just a little way about how to think about arranging the meals and something else i do is i think about so we have two to three vegetarian meals a week um so I kind of try to spread them out and just sort of spread it around so that you're not having the same type of thing, like two pasta dishes or two rice dishes in a row, that type of thing. Sometimes the days switch around. So sometimes I'll look at it and I go, oh, I really don't feel like having that tonight. Let's have the thing that's tomorrow or we might have a really busy day and I haven't had a chance to do the prep in the Arvo, so we'll have the easy thing instead and then we'll just switch it around. But it's good to start off with a plan anyway. Just on the note, I mentioned earlier, I usually batch cook something that we can put in the freezer. So that'll be things like, you know, slow cooker recipes, casseroles, stews, sp spaghetti bolognese, or it might be a pie and I'll make the... The, the filling of the pie but not put the crust on and I'll freeze them and you can get these I would get them but I'm pregnant and I can't be bothered getting up to show you but you can get these small little foil containers about this big from Woolworths they come in a six pack they're foil they come with a lid that has paper on top and then you can just write what it is on top I write the cooking instructions and they slot really nicely into the freezer um, before uh, my son Jed came along, I actually had like 30 or 40 meals stacked in our regular freezer that we could just pull out and um, all we had to do was cook 
veggies and or rice and pasta to go with that meal or you know pop a pie crust a frozen pie crust on the top and whack it in the oven so that's something that i find really helps meal planning through the week is to have a store of something frozen homemade meal that you can just pull out when you need something easy okay so now that we've established what you're eating then there's a little bit of an, an art when it comes to making the shopping list so let's pretend that this has all the meals written down that you're going to have throughout the week what i then do is grab my a4 notepad and i just divide it into four like this and i'll go through each meal and i'll write down in here what I need so um, in this top part here and you can do this however you want but this is how I do it this part I do all the fruit and veg this part I do meat and dairy and those perishable like perishable type things this side I will do pantry items and then down here I'll do household stuff like you know soap detergent that type of thing so yes, I go through each recipe and I put in the different places the, the, the stuff that I need. Um, throughout the week, so I mentioned we have this shopping list which is stuck to our fridge. So throughout the week, if something runs out or we think of something that we need to buy, I write that on this list. And then I just use both of these to do the shopping. The benefit of having it separated into your fruit and veg and what have you is after you've written your list of all the things you need, you can then go to your pantry and cupboard and just do a quick check to make sure that you don't already have some things. So for example, like if you're doing a recipe that needs tin tomatoes you might already have a can of those so you can cross tin tomatoes off your list and same with the fruit and veg like if you need a capsicum for for a meal you go and check your um crisper and you say oh we've already got one of those so we don't need three this week we only need two so you just do a little cross check before you do the shopping um also to this list I'll obviously write down all the stuff that we need that has nothing to do with recipes. So, you know, like your milks, your snacks, um, your fruit and veg, and, you know, all of that stuff. You just add that to the list. With um, just a note with regards to fruit and veg, what I'll often do is when I write the meals, I'll put a little plus and I'll write the vegetable that we're going to have with them. So I'll write like plus broccoli, plus... Um, asparagus plus a salad or whatever it's going to be that we're having i guess it helps mainly with the shopping because you know that you need like you know how much you need you're not buying too much green veg that you're not going to use and you're getting the right amount what else do i need to say i have a toddler so also will frequently include something that I can make a batch of that I can cut up and freeze. For example, zucchini slice is a popular one here. Uh, so we'll incorporate those type of things. And as you can see from my big binder, I love baking. So more often, more often than that, not every week, there'll be some kind of baked thing that I want to try. And I will obviously incorporate the ingredients into this list as well so that's how to make the shopping list now where do you guys do your shopping i do my shopping online i started doing this um before jed was born and i much prefer it to doing it in the shop one of the reasons i love it is because it helps you control a budget so we have a set budget that we stick to each week for our groceries and when you do your groceries online you know how much you're spending there's no surprises when you get to the checkout. So when, if I go over the budget amount, which, which does happen more often than not, what I do is go back through the, the, the shopping items and I remove some things that 
uh, we don't need or you know those extra things that I've snuck into the trolley onto the you know the trolley and I just do work it that way to get it back under budget another benefit of doing the online shopping is that you can easily go in to see that what the weekly specials are so what I do on my um, online shopping is keep a master list of all the foods that we eat on a regular basis so I go through that first and you just quickly go through and uh, um, buy all the stuff that you get all the time and cross it off your list as you go and then at the end I usually go to the special section and they'll often have half price like um, of have the household items like cleaning or beauty products and stuff like that so I'll skim that and I might get some extra things that we don't necessarily need but um, would be a good thing to get while they're on special so that is really the end of my video on how I meal plan I hope that you found this helpful in some way happy meal planning and I will see you next time bye